All right, here we're locating points on the foot tie-in spleen channel, starting with spleen one. So spleen one is a Jing Wall point. It's on the big toe, point one soon from the corner of the nail. Just make sure we're coming to the inside corner of the big toe. Spleen two and three are on either side of the joint, kind of like how LI two and three are on either side of the joint of the hand. So spleen two is in the depression distal and inferior to the first metatarsophalangeal joint. So you can start by palpating the ball of the foot and just come distal until we fall into a little depression. And that's gonna be spleen two. It might not feel like there's a lot of room here, but we can actually, if you find a depression, you can needle quite deeply. Spleen three is on the other side of the joint. So spleen three is proximal and inferior to the head of the first metatarsal bone. So here, kind of like LI3, we can find a nice corner pocket, just proximal to the head of the first metatarsal bone. All right, so spleen four is one that a lot of people have trouble with. Spleen four is in the depression just distal and inferior to the base of the first metatarsal bone. So here's the head of the bone, the base of the bone, and we're in the depression just distal and inferior. So notice that these two points are actually pretty close together. They're only about one soon apart. So if people have trouble here, they usually come too far in. They either feel a bump or they even come as far as the navicular bone. So what I do here is start at spleen three and feel along the lower border of the metatarsal bone. And when you feel it start to flare out, that's spleen four. If you start to feel a bump, you're feeling a joint and you've gone just a little bit too far. So that's spleen four, and it's about one soon proximal to spleen three. The other thing we can mention here is if you're following CAM, it'll say that these points all lie at the junction of the red and white skin, meaning where the skin changes color from the sole of the foot to the side of the foot. Well, personally, I would just ignore this, because remember, when we're locating points, we're looking for the empty spaces between tissues. So here we have the muscle of the arch and the bone, and we're feeling for the empty space between the two. So rather than looking for a change of color with your eyes, I would just feel with your fingers for the empty spaces, and that's where you'll find spleen two, three, and four. Spleen five is at the junction of the lower border and anterior border of the medial malleolus. So if we draw a line at the inferior border, and the anterior border, where they come together, is spleen five. Now if people have trouble here, what they do is they come up too close to this tendon, and that's liver four. So what I've heard some people say is they do tip of the malleolus and the navicular bone, and then come halfway for spleen five, and that just prevents you from drifting into liver four territory. So this point is right where the ankle bends, so it's kind of like the LI5 of the foot. All right, so after that, we're on the lower leg, and here we have two options for our soon measurements. We can go tip of the medial malleolus to popliteal crease is 15 soon, or we can go medial malleolus to spleen nine is 13 soon. So they're both odd numbers, so they're both pretty inconvenient, but I usually go with medial malleolus to spleen nine is 13 soon. Just because one, you need to be proficient in finding spleen nine, but also a lot of people have trouble visualizing the line of the popliteal crease for uh, 15 soon. A lot of times they'll end up shortening their measurement. So we have to be able to find spleen nine. There are two ways we can do it. One is that we can just palpate for it. Spleen nine is in the depression of the angle formed by the shaft of the tibia and the medial epicondyle of the tibia. So if we feel along the border, we'll come straight up and then angle out. Come straight up and then angle out. So spleen nine is right at the angle between the two. And we just need to make sure that we come in the soft and squishy part. And this is gonna be pretty tender on most people. Now, if I have trouble palpating, or if I need to check it, I have another option. And that is I can come to the other side and feel for the head of the fibula come to the lower border of the head of the fibula, and that will be level with spleen nine. 
So when I say find the lower border of the head of the fibula, I'm actually saying find gallbladder 34. The name of gallbladder 34 is yang mound spring. The name of spleen 9 is yin mound spring. So they're at the same level. So that's something I can use as a check for spleen 9. And so now I found spleen 9 and I have my 13 soon measurement. All right, after we have spleen 9, that gives us our 13 soon, and we can find spleen 6. Spleen 6 is 3 soon above the malleolus. So here's 13 soon. Half of 13 is 6 and a half. Half of 6 and a half is 3 and a quarter. And then we just fudge it down about a quarter of a soon to find spleen 6, 3 soon above the malleolus. So even though we say 3 soon above the malleolus, make sure that you're posterior to the tibia into the soft and squishy part. So that's spleen 6. Spleen 7 is 6 soon up. So here's 13 soon. Half of 13 is 6 and a half. And then we just fudge it down about a half a soon to find spleen 7. And then spleen 8 is 3 soon down from spleen 9. So here's 13 soon. Half of 13 is 6 and a half. Half of 6 and a half is 3 and a quarter. Then we fudge it up about a quarter of a soon to find spleen 8. So then we have spleen 6 is 3 soon up, spleen 7 is 3 soon above that, then we have a 4 soon gap, and spleen 8 is 3 soon down from spleen 9. After that, spleen 10 is 2 soon above the medio superior corner of the patella. So to find our 2 soon, uh, we can find the height of the patella is 2 soon, but just if you do this, make sure you're finding only the patellar bone. Don't squeeze the whole ligament. So to avoid that, I usually just find the width of the patella is too soon. Then we're coming above the corner and coming out at about a 45 degree angle to find spleen 10. And so if we straighten the leg and flex the quad, here we're right at the bulge of the vastus medialis muscle and we're directly above spleen 9 too soon up. And then spleen 11 is 6 soon above spleen 10. So again, we can find our 2 soon, and then just go 2, 4, 6 for spleen 11. And then when you find this, just make sure you're doing 6 soon above spleen 10. Sometimes people mess up and they do 6 soon above the patella, but we want to find 6 soon above spleen 10 for spleen 11. So then once we get onto the lower abdomen, the measurements get kind of weird. So spleen 12 is level with REN2, 3.5 soon lateral to the midline. So how do we measure our 3.5 soon? Well, we really don't need to. What we can do is first palpate for the upper border of the pubic symphysis, and then we're just coming out laterally into the inguinal crease. And here we can feel the femoral artery. We want to come just lateral to that for spleen 12. And then spleen 13 is 0.7 soon up and half a soon lateral. So how do we measure 0.7 soon? Well, we really don't need to. This point is 4 soon out, so we can find our 4 soon using the border of rectus abdominis. And then we can just come down until we fall in the inguinal crease, and that will give us spleen 13. After that, we can find spleen 15, which is four soon lateral to the umbilicus. So we can just come to the umbilicus and then just come out four soon to the border of rectus abdominis for spleen 15. So after spleen 15, spleen 14 is 1.3 soon below spleen 15. So how do we measure 1.3 soon? Well, we really don't. If we can just feel the ridges of rectus abdominis, it's like we're coming, if she had six pack abs, we're coming down one pack for spleen 14. And after that, spleen 16 is three soon above spleen 15. So here we can use our measurement on, along the midline from sternocostal angle to umbilicus is eight soon. Half of eight is four, half of four is two, halfway between two and four is three. So spleen 16, is three soon up from spleen 15.
After that, we move on to the chest, and we ran out of time to record this with Tiffany, so I'll just locate these points on myself. So spleen 17 is on the chest, and notice that our line moves from 4 soon lateral to the midline to 6 soon lateral to the midline. And this is kind of similar to the stomach channel. Remember, the stomach channel on the abdomen was 2 soon out, and as it moved on to the chest, it shifted to 4 soon out. Well, the spleen channel, we start at 4 soon out, and then as it goes on to the chest, it shifts to 6 soon lateral to the midline. And here, we're just locating our points in the intercostal spaces. So from here, it might be easier to start at the top and count our way down. So remember, the way we find rib spaces is this is my manubrium, this is my sternum. Where they come together is the sternomanubrial angle. So I take two fingers and put them on either side of the joint. Now if I move out just a little bit, I can feel a bone between my fingers. That bone is the second rib. So my top finger is in the first intercostal space, my bottom finger is in the second intercostal space. So if we went with the first intercostal space and palpated six soon out, that would give me lung one. Spleen 20 is right below lung one. So I come back to the midline, first intercostal space, second intercostal space, in the second intercostal space, palpate six soon out, and that gives me spleen 20. Come back to the midline, first, second, second, third, third intercostal space, come six soon out, and that gives me spleen 19. Come back to the midline, first, second, second, third, third, fourth, fourth intercostal space, lines up with the nipple, come two soon out, uh, for a total of six soon out, and that will give me spleen 18. Come back to the midline, first, second, second, third, third, fourth, fourth, fifth. Remember the fifth intercostal space is right where the pec attaches, go to six soon out, and I'll get spleen 17. So this one, it might look like it's right next to the nipple, but that's just because the intercostal spaces curve up as you go out. So some of them might look a little bit higher than what you would expect with the stomach channel. After that is spleen 21. Spleen 21 is on the mid-axillary line in the sixth or seventh intercostal space. Some books say six, some books say seven. The thing is, it gets kind of hard to count rib spaces this far out, so usually what we do is just feel for the 11th rib, the tip of the 11th rib, and we go axillary crease to tip of the 11th rib and find halfway, and that will give us about the 6th or 7th intercostal space. And then we just need to make sure that we're locating this point on the mid-axillary line. The way you can tell is when I put my arm down, you can't see the point anymore. So in order to get to this point, you have to lift the arm up because it's in the mid-axillary line. So that is the foot tie-in spleen channel. Special thank you to Tiffany for being the model, and to Mallory for helping with the recording, and thank you to the Patreon members. It's your contributions that make videos like this possible, so I really do appreciate the support. If you'd like to join the Patreon, I'll put a link to that in the description below. But that's all for today. Thanks, and see you next time.